This video explains why you may or may not need a device such as 748, F-amp, or pixel extender, or amplifier. First, let's talk a little bit about physics in electricity, because this is what drives all of the issues that we have with pixels. So, that is around voltage. Now, in a pixel, we can have three voltages, typically. We'll have 3.3 volts, for example, in the data line, and then we may have either 5 or 12 volts to supply power to the pixel. Now, why do we have 5 volts and 12 volt pixels? If 12 volt goes further and all these other benefits, what's the disadvantage? Well, let's start with something that's more relative. If you've ever had a water hose, and you had, for example, a 50 foot water hose, before you hook it up to the water faucet, the water comes out with a relatively high pressure. You turn it on, the water comes out, there's a lot of volume of water, and then you stop it, you put on the first hose. Let's just say 50 feet in this example. When you go to the end of the hose, the same amount of pressure at the beginning of the hose at the faucet exists. But at the end of the hose, at 50 foot, we have a pressure drop, and there's less pressure. Now, where did that pressure go? It came in the form of resistance. The water molecules had to push along the side of the hose and lost some of their energy in the process of going through the hose. That results in lower pressure on the output side of the hose. Now, what happens when we add another one? So we add another 50 foot. Now we're at 100 feet. The pressure drops even further. Now, how do you get around that? Let's say you want similar pressure at the faucet and the output. Well, the solution to that is to get a bigger diameter hose so that we have less restrictions. Now, that concept is completely the same in electrical wiring. We just have electrons instead of H2O, and they're running in copper wire, usually, uh, instead of maybe your PVC water hose. Now, that means that if we increase the pressure by increasing the voltage, we can push more through even if there is restrictions. So, if we don't control for the diameter or the gauge of the wire, and we use the same gauge for 5 and 12 volt, 5 volt will have higher losses over a distance than 12 volt will. So, this is why you'll sometimes see pixels used in products where we want to go long distances, such as house outlines. And you'll see 5 volt used in matrix panels or megatrees, where you have lots of pixels all close together in a very short physical distance. Now, why use 5 volts over 12 volts? Well, because 5 volts is closer to the actual voltage of the pixels that we're using. So if we have in this pixel, we have a LED and we have computer chips that run the actual controlling of the pixel. Now, those pixels typically are running, or chips are running, at around 5 volts. Well, if we supply them 12 volts and they run at 5, that means we have to drop the voltage from 12 volts to 5 volts where they're comfortable at. This is why if you've ever held 12 volt pixels, you'll notice they're warm because the vast majority of pixels use what are called dropping resistors. A very simple process where we waste energy in the process of dropping it from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. You can also see this in examples such as wall warts. Those black boxes that you plug into the wall, they have a transformer, and they're converting 120 volts to 5 or 12 volts. And that allows the power to be dropped. And they result in output of heat at that transformer. That's why a 12 volt pixel will almost always be warmer than a 5 volt pixel. Now, that means that generally speaking, the exact same pixel in 5 volt and 12 volt will consume twice as much power on a 12 volt version versus a 5 volt version. So, you may have 0.25 or 0.3 watts per pixel at 5 volts and it might be 0.4 to 0.45 watts at 12 volts. Now, there's no additional light output at that increased voltage. Still the same amount of light output 
all that extra energy just simply went to the form of heat. Now, why talk about all that if what we're trying to do is related to the data signal? The reason is, is because the data signal also operates at different voltages and has the same physical issues of going through the wire, but it's even more pronounced. Why? Because while we have power going down here and we can overcome losses in this wire because maybe it's thin or maybe it's low quality or maybe it's just long distances, we can increase the voltage. But with the data signal, it's going to generally be around 3.3 volts, which is even lower than the five volts. Well, if you wanted to use an analogy, imagine that the power wire is almost like yelling at somebody. So imagine you have two people separated by 50 feet and you yell at 12 volts and they can easily hear you. Then you whisper at 3.3 volts and they can no longer hear you. Now, how do you solve that problem? You go closer and closer together. Now, of course, if you have 12 volt going closer, if you could already hear each other at 50 feet going closer, it just means you can hear each other better. And then at some point, once you reach a certain distance, that whisper will become audible to the receiver. That's what pixels are doing. Pixels are sending signal from one pixel to the next pixel or from the controller to the first pixel. And then what happens is sometimes we get the distances so far that that signal becomes either corrupted or simply just gets lost and absorbed through the reduction of the friction, for lack of a better word, resistance, in the cable itself. Now, rule of thumb is generally on good quality cable with 2811, 1903 style pixels, about 25 feet from either pixel to pixel or from the controller start to the first pixel. So generally, if you're under 25 feet, you're going to be fine. There are some unique circumstances where you can have outside interference that can interfere with the data. I'll give you an example. So let's go back to our uh, analogy of whispering. Let's say that we decided 25 feet between two people, whispering is audible. And that's in a completely non-external noise circumstance. Okay, great, sending data, I can whisper back and forth. What happens now that you have a train horn honking next to you? Well, even at 25 feet, maybe even at 10 feet, you can no longer hear each other. That is in the electric world called EMI, or electro electrical uh, interference. And so what happens is, is sometimes you can have a high voltage power wire that runs close to this, which emits a lot of electromagnetic interference that overwhelms the small data signal. So there can be two issues, the wire itself and the distance or external interference. Now, how do we get around these problems? Well, if it's EMI or outside interference, try never to run a high voltage wire next to or in parallel to these low voltage data signals. That's a good start. Now, the second is distance. Well, if we need to go a further distance, we need to boost up that output. And this is what that product does. So, for example, let's say that we have a situation where we need to go to some 12 volt pixels and they are 45 feet away or 50 feet away. Now, if we just ran an extension cable 50 feet and ran it from the controller to the pixels, probably the signal will no longer work. Now, again, these are not absolutes. These are general rule of thumb numbers. So 25 feet, usually the break point. Now, at 50 feet, no more signal. It just can't hear it. It's either too faint or it's become corrupted. And so the signal goes from a nice clean data signal that has nice clean sharp edges to something that's just not able to be interpreted. And thus, that pixel and all the remaining other pixels can no longer run correctly. What this does is it simply just takes that signal and it's sort of like a booster. So imagine back to our example, we have 50 feet of distance and let's say we're whispering. We might whisper to somebody that's at 25 feet and then they yell or speak louder to the person at the next mark of 50 feet. And that's what this is. This is a repeater. It takes the signal just like a normal pixel does, receives it, boosts it up even more than a normal pixel would, and then sends it on to the next pixel. So typically you would have this either at the beginning 
because it does boost the signal higher than a normal pixel at the beginning or middle of the signal. Sometimes, depending upon the uh, level of quality of the signal, sometimes you actually can even put this at the end of a line right before pixel. So you may need to do some experimenting to determine that. It's not really possible to tell that without a proper scope. So this is why, in certain cases, you may need to use this amplifier. Now, I will caution that this does not solve any related issues to power other than the signal quality of a data signal. So it's taking power, it's using a chip to repeat the data signal. Now, this will not solve a problem if you go, let's say, 150 feet and you put several of these in and you repeat the signal, the signal may reach these pixels at the end, but the problem is, is that your power may have dissipated too much. So that you can check with a meter and just check your power to see where your voltage is. So for example, if you're at 12 volts and very long distances, if you're below nine to eight volts at that string, you probably are going to have problems or you may experience problems that kind of randomly happen, it seems, such as whenever you start operating them, they start acting weird. And this is because at regular resting voltage where one or two pixels might be on, it works fine. But then when you turn it on and you turn all the pixels on, they use so much power that there's not any power sufficient to run the chips in the pixels themselves. So there's a lot of complexity going on here. And while Holiday Coro generally tries to design products and solutions not requiring this product, this may be a product that is useful for certain customers who have unique circumstances and long distances to run their pixels.